Okay, so the first step you're going to do is you're going to open up a finder window on one side and then open up a second finder window on your USB jump drive that you've put in where you have the movie file. So in this case, the movie file is right here. It's Mark uh, M4V. And we're going to drag that video file over into the movies folder. All right, so now that's done. We're going to go into GarageBand. When you come into GarageBand, you're going to have opened up before the Glaze template. And the Glaze template will look something like this when you first come into it. Down on the bottom right hand side, you're going to see this View Hide the Media Browser button. You're going to click on it, and it's going to show you the media browser. Yours may default to iMovie, it may default to a, a menu system, but there should be a drop down menu like my cursor is on right here. And if we go to the Movies folder, we should be able then to pull in movies. And in this case, we see Mark's video. So we're just going to drag, hold the video down and drag it over into the main file. And it will create everything we need. All right. Now we're going to close the media browser by going back down to the bottom right corner and click the info button. This now gives us the capabilities of editing the audio. Now the track when it opens up is going to open up the audio under movie sound. The first thing we're going to want to do is drag the audio clip down into the live performance track because that track has already been set up for you with a template uh, to give you some of the controls that you're going to want and as far as EQ and compression. So all we got to do is click on the track and drag it right down and it's done. You're then going to click on movie sound, go to track, and then we're going to click delete track. We now should have the video in the original form. So this has got some beginning info in it, but we can then click, uh, if we want to watch the video and have some control on moving through it, you just click on the video up in the movie track. And then by hitting the space bar, it'll begin to play. Give me a shorter cut just for now. And then we can move anywhere that we want to within the video. So we'll start from right here. Then to stop the sound at any time, all you need to do is hit the space bar. So I'm not clicking down here, I'm just hitting the space bar. So I notice in this track right now that Mark has a little bit too much reverb uh, through my desktop speakers. You may want to listen to this through headphones, through the Mac speakers, and through desktop speakers. So I'm going to click Edit over here on the right under Real Instrument, and it will show me the master reverb setting. And all I need to do is drag this and adjust the percentage of reverb that I want into it. All the settings are already there to make the uh, quality what we need for the glaze uh, setting. So we're just going to kind of play and listen and adjust the reverb until we're happy with it. Good. The one other thing I noticed right now, the sound is coming out very lopsided. Uh, this is your pan setting, and I'll try to correct this in the template before I give it to you, but right now the sound is all set to the right speaker. I'm going to just click the middle, and we now have it at zero, so now when I play it, the sound should be more balanced. Bed and dress is the best that money can buy. I never knew how so let's say we're okay with that. The other thing I may want to adjust on this is the EQ. So if I come over here to Visual EQ, which again is under the real instrument, I'm just going to click on this spot right here that has the blue, and then it'll turn to sliders. Once I click on that, I can now control the audio. The area between 2,000 and 10,000 is where the forward placement shows up in the voice. So if I back Mark up a little bit, I can start to listen to him, and as he sings, I can adjust his forward placement. Now, to be clear, this isn't cheating. This is what they do in a live performance anytime that they're using a sound system. It's what makes you be heard over an audience and it's typical uh, adjustments they make. They even do this on the broadcast from the Metropolitan Opera. The other place we may want to make a slight adjustment is somewhere under this 200 range for definitely the men. For the women, we may want to push going towards 500, but that may end up making them sound a little muddy. 
Down here is the bass in the piano, and the camera doesn't have a great bass response. That means it doesn't naturally pick up the bass uh, notes in the piano as well. So if we boost that a little bit, we're going to get a little uh, cleaner sound from the piano. And that's also part of the reason we're boosting the treble, is our ear hears the voice kind of from a neutral place, but the microphone adjusts the signal before we get the final recording, so we're just kind of making up for it. With a lot of bugs like me. Now, as I adjust the EQ settings, I might have to come back down here and adjust the overall volume level. And that's okay to do, because basically every time you bump the EQ, you are bumping up the volume. So we're just going to kind of play with this. And if this isn't enough, you can adjust this uh, audio setting here. But in the template, it's set at zero, which for most of you should work. If it's way too loud, go ahead and adjust that. So we'll just listen again now that I've turned it down. She's got a be sheltered and fed and dressed in the best that money can buy. So let's say I want to take that. The only other setting that might be of interest to you is if you click on the analyzer, it can show you where your voice is falling in the EQ and it can sometimes give you a hint where you might want to adjust things. So you can watch this as I adjust. I, I never knew how to get money, but I'll try, my God, I'll try. So maybe we'll take that for instance. Maybe that made him sound a little too bright. So let's go back to the lower part and listen. I can't get ready. Then as he's playing, if I want to touch and look at the difference between the EQ and the un-EQ, I'm just going to toggle this on and off button on. So there's the dry, which is definitely too dark. And so the goal is when you set the EQ is to make it sound like Mark or yourself actually sounds. Uh, in glaze when you're sitting in the audience. And so that's why sometimes it can be helpful to have somebody beside you help you set up the EQ. But I think that's what Mark sounds like in a room that has a nice reverb to it. And that's Mark's voice. So let's leave it at that. I'm just going to hit the red button here to exit out. And now I have all of his EQ settings. If you wanted to play with stuff on the master track, you would just click up here. The master is the overall settings. I've picked some master effects that are really good. Vocals, soft background. Uh, compressor which is jazz warm the compressor just helps even out the dynamic levels because uh, our ears naturally kind of do that for us a little bit in the room kind of does it for us on a recording sometimes it overpowers or it underpowers and uh, the cameras sometimes have an auto adjustment they're trying to move and when they do that they throw everything off so the compressor just helps bring it back to what we would expect to hear the ducker I've been setting uh, this says uh, manual it really should be set at fast moderate music reduction that just kind of uh, makes it so that we also get rid of any fast jumps in tone quality. We'll just double check the sound. She's got be sheltered. And again, I'll try to make sure that's saved in the original template. I've turned echo off. You can see if this button over here is lit up or not. That tells you if the effect is working. You don't want the echo. All the reverb settings are really good, so I leave that on. If you want to hear what it would sound like without reverb, you just press that button and hit play. And rest in the best that money Click it again to turn it on. So that's the way that we're going to kind of play around with those adjustments. Everything else is pretty much set and should give you the uh, end result that you're looking for. So then you would hit share and we are going to export movie to disc. When that comes up, you absolutely want full quality. You don't want to take any of the smaller settings because by the time you get it into iMovie, it's not going to look its best. So let's say that we name this and we'll put it in the movies folder again. We'll say that we call this Mark in Glaze. And once we do that, it should work or it won't. So let's just name it Mark and Glaze and put it in the documents folder. It'll do this whole thing of creating a mix down. And then it's going to convert it. And now the movie has been sent. So turn into the next uh, YouTube video and I'll show you how to take the finished movie in iMovie and do something with it.